Hello, YouTubers. I'm the Real Manos. I'm also known as Justin Cristelli to my friends. And I am back with comic reviews. Now, I took a few weeks off, and uh, I feel pretty well rested. Read some comic books, I wrote some comic books, and uh, I thought we'd uh, just get started with some new stuff. How about it? Uh, hold on, let me get a sip of coffee. And I'm all ready. Now, I have uh, blah, 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 five comics here that I picked up this week. And before I get going, I want to recommend you check out my comic book. Uh, I uh, create The Red Knight for Manos Publishing. Uh, you can find uh, Red Knight available in print and digital at manospublishing.com. Issue 4 is out right now. And Issue 5 uh, was uh, backed by uh, Kickstarter. And this issue is about to come out in print and digital April 28th. So uh, check it out. Uh, that'll be your chance to pick it up. So, hey, let's get started with some uh, other comic books made by other people. So, uh, what I picked up this week was the Sandman Lock and Key crossover, Daredevil, number 29, let's see here, Blowtorch, number 1, Nonstop Spider-Man, and, oh, Nonstop Spider-Man number two, I should say. And uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Janaika 2, number six. And let's just get going in this order. So, hey, uh, I didn't really know about this crossover. I heard about it and then completely forgot about it. That, uh, uh, let's see, the Lock and Key Sandman crossover. Now, uh, Lock and Key is officially done by IDW, but uh, Hill has done a lot of work with DC, so, you know, this was kind of an easy uh, crossover to make. And uh, I'm a big Sandman fan, but I have very little knowledge of Lock and Key. I've watched the Netflix season uh, that aired last year, I believe it was. Uh, so my knowledge of Lock and Key is from that. Uh, I assume it's not too far apart from the regular comic. Uh, let's see, I know about, the, you know, the, the general... Uh, concept of the keys that can you know do all sorts of things, the Locke family, the history, stuff like that. Um, so uh, this involves uh, let's see, Mary Locke, who is trying to free her brother from hell, uh, and uh, the whole situation of him being dead and possibly being in hell is torturing you know her poor father and her sister, and everyone's just really yeah not feeling great about it. Uh, Let's see, so she decides to do something about it. She has access to the keys. So she contacts uh, Burgess, the guy who captured Sandman in the first place, uh, because he is supposed to be great at mysticism and all sorts of kind of powers and, and dark magic. So she's like, okay, maybe I'll try this guy. And he introduces her to none other than his prisoner, Morpheus. Um, and he basically doesn't seem like he's helping, uh, except he gives her a sign. Uh, he draws in sand the mask uh, that was stolen from him, that she obviously saw uh, Burgess's son uh, wearing when she uh, first walks in. So she decides to kind of creepily sneak into his room and go, hey, I heard you want to go visit America? Isn't that fun? Hey, you can use this key to go to America. Just give me your stuff. And they make a trade, and she goes right into the dreaming. Uh, and she runs into Cain and Abel, and this is an interesting, fun way to, like, you know, introduce them. Uh, and she's horrified by Abel because uh, she runs into him as he's dead Cain kills him again in front of her. Uh, she escapes those two. Uh, she, we run into some characters I haven't seen in Sandman in a long time uh, that were apparently, you know, taking up space and running around. Um, and then she runs into a very familiar and dangerous Sandman character. Uh, the art is gorgeous. Uh, I didn't really talk about the creative team here, but uh, I will now. Uh, this was... Where are you? See... This is Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez, and uh, let's see, 
He also did the art. Uh, the art is absolutely gorgeous. And uh, Neil Gaiman consulted with this, but didn't really co-write it. Um, but boy, it does feel really like something within the series. And I, I it's kind of nice to revisit. Uh, I know we've had the recent Sandman Universe titles, uh, but I haven't really dug too deeply into those. So, you know, this was a little bit coming back to me. This was great. It's a six ninety nine dollars pickup. Uh, if you're a fan of Lock and Key or Sandman, uh, definitely check it out. This was very, very good. Uh, five out of five ramp chips. Uh, now we jump over to Marvel's uh, Daredevil, and this is Chip Sadowski and Marco Cicchetto, and this is issue 29 uh, with the Elektra Daredevil, <laughs> the Elektra as Daredevil cover. And of course, Daredevil Matt Murdock is still stuck in prison. He has been poisoned, and he goes out to get some air, and he is accosted by a group of uh, prisoners. Apparently, this was set off and allowed, possibly by the warden who hates him and wants to kill him. This seems like some sort of like conspiracy. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Elektra is kind of like setting up shop a little bit more in, uh, in Hell's Kitchen. She finds uh, a number of uh, uh, let's see, uh, thugs from from uh, Izzy Iberis' uh, gang. They are now kind of like extorting money from businesses, and she tells the uh, young girl that she is kind of mentoring, like, you know, look, you know, it's, you know, people are overpowering each other over and over again. See what they do. I'm going to do that to them. And she tells them, like, look, you're in my territory, so you give me money. <laughs> so that they send that message back to the boss, and she's not very happy about that. She talks about it with her number two, Butch, uh, who she's made recently into her number two guy instead of her son because be the recent killing of her other son has made her think, well, I really don't want to risk my, my other son. Uh, and they also seem kind of intimate. And then we see... Uh, Butch go back and talk to Mike Murdoch, who's still in disguise as uh, Matt Murdoch, and it seems like they're setting her up, and they're playing a long game. Uh, meanwhile, we see what Kingpin is doing. He has control of Bullseye, uh, and we finally get back to Daredevil's fight, and it looks like he may have been uh, stabbed in the gut, maybe down for the count. I don't know. Um... This is great stuff. There's no bad issue of Chip Zdarsky's Daredevil. This is great. I love it. Buy this book. I uh, highly recommend it. Five out of five gram chips. Me talking about uh, the issue, kind of spoiling, spoiling, spoiling everything in the issue, I don't think really gives away how great the read this is. Uh, 100%. Go pick it up. Five out of five gram chips. Now, uh, I'm going to go over to a uh, company. I haven't... I don't really... I haven't done too many reviews of. Um, I have done reviews of books that have become part of them, uh, like Chess and the Edge, and I will be talking more about those books. Uh, but this is Second Sight. It's a uh, small independent uh, company, and they've been building uh, in recent uh, couple of years. Uh, they uh, had a couple of titles uh, jump from their previous uh, independent uh, titles to them. Uh, namely The Edge and Chess. And this is a uh, spin-off of the book Chess. It's, um, a, Chess is a kind of G.I. Joe type of superhero series. And uh, Blowtorch is uh, probably the most popular character uh, of the series so far. Uh, this is from Alfred Page, uh, Alex uh, DeGrunchy, and uh, uh, Mentos. Uh, Montos uh, is the artist. And... Uh, I've had I've, I've read the first couple of issues of Chess uh, from its previous uh, publishing as well as the Pinpoint uh, one shot and Blowtorch has always struck me as kind of like uh, like your standard you know you know rough and tough uh, character you know he's always masked he has these uh, two blowtorches on his arms uh, and he. He's always really, like, you know, a real tough guy. And this really does a great job of exploring who this character is. I mean, first panel does that, where I didn't even consider the fact that he wears the mask all the time, that 
he was severely burnt, and now he is a fire character. Um, he actually uh, shares a little bit in common with uh, Snake Eyes, where he's always <clears throat> probably the toughest character in the room, and maybe kind of the most uh, emotionally vulnerable. I really like this. Um, it's not something I was expecting in uh, reading the previous issues with him. He is, uh, we get a quick uh, uh, page of his origin, and then we go right to work. Uh, he is heading off uh, on a secret mission, and uh, one of the other members of Chess runs into him. Uh, her name is Footpath, and she's like, where are you going? What are you doing? And he's like, uh, got a thing I got to do, and uh, it's really dangerous. I have to do it alone. And she's like, yeah, whatever. I'm going with you. And uh, they have, by the way... Ever since issue one of Chess, they've had a uh, nice chemistry, and I'm, I'm happy to uh, see that going on here. Uh, I won't give too much away, but uh, it's related to uh, his origins, where uh, in the hospital after his initial burning, he fell in love with a nurse, and they eventually tried to get together, but it never really did uh, pan out. And now she recently contacted him because she's been part of a secret con... Uh, contest. I was going to say contest. She's been part of a secret project and it's gone south very badly. So uh, he goes to check things out and they go into the secret base that's been frozen. Everyone's dead and they run into this guy with ice powers, with ice dogs that uh, chase after them. Um, screaming about his dead children. I can't, or his children. I can't see them. I don't know where they are. Uh, you know, kind of Screaming madness. So they're able to escape. They run into, finally, uh, his, uh, I'd say his ex. And we get to see a little bit more about the secret project. It's a really cool uh, race to get through this place and kind of escape him while also battling him. I don't want to really give too much away. Uh, the art's really gorgeous. Uh, I have uh, black and white here. And it's a really solid, good-looking strong book. It makes good use of the black and white and all the shadowing uh, and this abandoned facility. Uh, I don't want to really give too much away, but uh, oh boy, this was really fun. Um, I did liked it a lot. And I'm going to actually talk more about it in a, a spotlight video where I'm going to review the whole book. Uh, but just take it from me right now. Uh, this is worth your time. And this is an independent book, so you know it definitely needs your support more than you know a Marvel DC book. Uh, five out of five ramp chips. I uh, really enjoyed this quite a bit. Uh, you should check it out. All right, now, back to Marvel. Uh, I'm going to be talking about Nonstop Spider-Man, number two. And this is by Joe Kelly and uh, Chris Pacello, who I always love. Uh, and I feel like we've all slept on him being a really cool Spider-Man artist. Like, he occasionally pops up and does some issues and then goes away. And I don't know, I just adore his work. He's always had this great vibe about this cool like energy to his work. It looks unique uh, compared to anybody else. And he's really suited well for this book because it's supposed to be a more um, fast-paced series. I don't know how that's going to work uh, in the long run for an ongoing, but uh, for right now it's uh, really fun. I don't know if they're going to use different artists or not. But uh, essentially... Uh, Spidey has come across uh, a bunch of students at uh, Empire State University who have fallen ill to this uh, drug called A+, that's been killing them, and he starts investigating it with Nora Winters, of all people. They're able to capture uh, one of the henchmen connected to this, and he starts talking all weird about how Norwegian and European Nora is, and... Uh, they start making a connection like, wait, all the straight A students that fell ill to this drug uh, were people of color. <laughs> and they like start piecing it like, okay, what the hell is happening? And they're immediately talk attacked by two more villains who are working with them. I've never seen these guys. I assume they're created for this series. Uh, they're very interesting. They're two kind of luchador uh styled uh, characters with a monster truck and we get further and further into the mystery and of course like Zemo shows up who may or may not be connected to this uh, so 
Uh, this is very cool. Uh, it's very fast-paced, uh, as it's supposed to be. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I like the interactions between uh, Spider-Man and Nora Winters. Uh, I've really grown to really like her as a character, and she's kind of become sort of a modern uh, equivalent to J. Jonah Jameson in that weird kind of ally foil type of character. Uh, dig this one a lot. I'm going to give this four out of five round chips. Uh, a lot of fun. All right, now finally to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Janaika number two, or excuse me, Janaika two, number six. Now, this has been a weird miniseries because it had a plot that for the first few issues, and then it changed and did a different plot, and I, I don't know why, but I've liked both, and I really enjoyed the second one, actually. Um, this is the final issue of this. This is issue six, and uh, she has been uh, dealing with this uh, female crime boss who was mutated over in Mutant Town, and she had a son that hadn't been, and he's, you know, in the, the regular world, and she had been, like, wanted to, you know, kind of make a connection with her, with her son, and eventually we find out that uh, Janaika, when she was with the uh, Foot Clan, actually murdered the father, and is now kind of doing this out of guilt, and has been making a connection with the son, and now we get this plot twist that it was the mother who had the father killed and she is trying to prep the son to be like the next leader of the family and you know the kid is a kid he doesn't want to be evil he wants to you know be a he wants to join nasa and you know go to the stars and you know be a scientist and he's not interested in being a mob boss uh i mean he's basically a total victim here uh it's a really wonderful uh series of like uh scenes of jen and the kid kind of connecting and having to try and figure out how to outsmart her evil mother uh that's when we bring the the regular guys back when they uh, are able to escape it's really heartwarming it's a really uh cool story i've dug this one a lot this is from uh ronda pattinson and uh the art is from uh jody nashima I really dug this one a lot. Uh, I de definitely recommend going back and pick up uh, this miniseries if you haven't been uh, grabbing it. It's been a really good read. And uh, I'm going to give this five out of five gram chips. I've really enjoyed this quite a bit. So, hey, those are the books I picked up this week. How about you? Uh, leave me a comment below. Uh, you know, did you read any of these comics? Did you like them? Are there any books that you read that maybe I should read? Uh, and I'm sure that really doesn't help my algorithm at all. I mean, just coincidence that I mentioned that. So uh, leave me a comment, uh, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for all things Manos. I am at Patreon. You can support the channel and uh, Manos Publishing there. Uh, I'm also at Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, I've started a TikTok at Justin Cristelli. You can catch me there if you want. And uh, I think that's about it. And like I mentioned, uh, Red Knight number five is gonna be available uh, at Manos Publishing, April 28th. I'll be talking a little bit more about that, too. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. All right, I think that's it for now. Push the button, Lindsay.